This section on service node in session will conclude uh, the second module that focuses on fabric automation. Service node in session is also known as the um, elastic service redirections. This is the capacity for DCNM to automate the insertion and deployment of firewalls or load balancer with or without the policy based routing. In general, uh, due to the high volume of traffic inside a fabric, a layer 4, layer 7 service node, when deployed uh, in a Bermuda wire fashion, may become quickly the bottleneck. Otherwise, you need to deploy a large farm of service nodes to uh, digest all the data packets, right? So, nonetheless, a more efficient way is to filter, select, and redirect only the traffic of interest toward the um, service node. And that's what we call the elastic service redirections. DCNM embeds several options to attach and automatically deploy a service node and the policy you wish to apply with um, that particular service node. Different scenarios are possible, such as uh, these first options with selective traffic redirections within a tenant or a VRF. Uh, and this is using a PBR, policy-based routing. PBR allows the creation of uh, policies that can selectively alter the path that data packets uh, take uh, within the network. Inside the tenant, the traffic is routed by the IRB functions, so you need a mechanism to select and to redirect only the concerned traffic toward the uh, firewalls. And that's why we need PBR for intra-tenant redirections. One arm or two arm model deployments uh, are supported. The other option is with the service node deployed as a layer 3 next hop for tenant edge firewalls, uh, securing the intertenant traffic communications. Uh, that means that you secure the routed traffic between two tenants or between two VRS via an external firewall. You can also leverage DCNM to deploy an SLB device, either using one arm design or two arm design. In short, with DCNM, you simplify and uh, you automate uh, the insertion of one or multiple layer, four layer, seven service nodes inside your VX and VPN fabric. Now let's focus on the um, intra-tenant deployment using a PBR. First, you need to enable the function of PBR, which is by default uh, disabled. For that purpose, you open the fabric settings where you want to deploy your service node for intra VRF communication and under the um, advanced tab, you check PBR. You can see uh, in the resource tab that uh, DCNM allocates a range of VLANs to auto provisions the network connectivity toward the uh, service node in case you don't have your VLAN ID, right? So this is optional. For the demo, we will use our VLAN because we will use a virtual firewall and the VLANs are already provisioned to the VM using um, the vCenter so, uh, and the POC group. So we need to reuse the same VLAN IDs. Also, you can see the uh, root map uh, that matches uh, the, the sequence numbers uh, at the device level. You have two options to start the service node deployment. Either you go uh, to the control service tab or uh, you, you, you go to the application windows, uh, the application tab, and uh, call the Elastic Service Applications, uh, which is exactly the same application. The um, Elastic Service Application comes embedded with uh, DCNM, so you don't have to install it. Creating the service node consists of three main steps. First, you need to attach the service node to the fabric. You specify on which leaf node or VPC pair devices your firewall is attached to and uh, which interface or VPC it is connected to and the VLAN used in the trunk to reach the inside and outside interfaces of uh, the firewall. The external fabric is the uh, fabric where the service node resides for DCNM because all devices that DCNM operates require to belong to a particular fabric. Then you need to specify the root peering. That means how to route 
the data packets to and from the network services. And because it is a stateful devices, you need to take care of how the return traffic is routed toward the same service node. And lastly, you define the service policy to select and uh, redirect uh, the data packets uh, from a source network A to a destination network B using the port uh, XYZ. A demo is always visual, hence uh, easier to capture the uh, functionalities. For the demo, a virtual ASA is hosted by a server single attached to a leaf node number three. And uh, we have two networks, uh, red and blue, and both belongs to tenant one. And we have a couple of endpoints uh, from uh, each network distributed uh, between leaf three and leaf four. The demo consists of uh, showing uh, that before we deploy a service node policy, the reachability exists between uh, network blue and uh, network red intra the VRF, if you will. The reason is for intra-tenant connectivity, the integrated routing and bridging the IRB functions offer the uh, required routing to communicate between different networks. You first need to enable the feature PBR. This is mandatory for intra-tenant redirections. And uh, in this demo, we are showing um, uh, the deployment of uh, virtual firewalls using two arms. We create an external fabric to host uh, the service node. This service node will be added automatically by DCNM. And finally, we run the deployment of a service node, which consists of uh, three case stages. Firstly, uh, it is necessary to attach the service node to the leaf node that belongs to the, um, uh, the fabric. Uh, secondly, it is required to provision the route to reach the service node. And lastly, uh, you need to create the policy service to select uh, the traffic of interest to be redirected to the firewalls. And you specify the source, the destination and the port you want to redirect to the service node. Let's go. For intratenant firewalling, you need first to enable the function of PBR. For this, you need to use the Fabric Builder to select the fabric where you wish to deploy your service node. You want to attach a virtual firewall to leaf tree in Fabric 2. Open the Fabric Settings. And under the Advanced tab, check the PBR feature. For your information, under the Resource tab, you can check the VLAN range pre-allocated for the um, service node, but in this demo, the VLAN ID are already given to the port groups attaching the, the interfaces of the virtual firewalls. You save and deploy As you can see with the previous action, uh, DCNM enables uh, the feature PBR for all leaf nodes that belong to, the, um, to that fabric. Let's deploy. Secondly, you need to create an external fabric to add the service node. Select the external fabric template, give a name, and enable the manage mode. This is crucial. And provide a nice number. That's all you need. You can save. Now the environment is uh, ready, you can call the service elastic applications using the control service. Change the scope to Fabric2 and add a new service. The first step is to configure the service node. Give a name, select the type of service. You have the choice between firewalls, uh, server load balancer, uh, virtual network functions. Uh, select firewalls, and this is a virtual firewall. Select the external fabric where you want to deploy the firewall, add the service node interface, specify on which node and interface the firewall is attached, leaf tree interface E1 slash 18. Optionally, you can specify if you want to add additional VLANs in the trunk, like here, and uh, there is an advanced tab for freeform config uh, not used in this uh, demo. Go to next, root peering. 
you can change the name. Uh, you need to select the type of deployment. Uh, we need uh, to select uh, intratenant firewalls here. For the inside network, indicates uh, the VRF tenant one. Specify the VLAN ID used for the inside network. Indicate the default gateways for VLAN 111. As well as the next hop, which is the IP address of the inbound interface of the firewall. You need to configure the outside network with its VLAN ID, uh, give the default gateways for the VLAN 101. as well as the next hop, which is the IP address of the outbound interface of the firewall. When done, you can go to the next step to create your service policies. Give a new name if you wish. Check the source and destined uh, VRF, which should be uh, the same uh, on both sides uh, in this scenario. Uh, indicate the source network and destinations. In your case, you expect the traffic from the web destined to application tiers to be redirected to the next hop 11.100, which is the uh, outbound interface of the firewall. And check the, um, the reverse next hop. So return traffic is forced to hit uh, the owner of the session, which is the firewall. You can tune the protocol uh, uh, with the source port and destination port if you wish to redirect, right? So you can call the advanced tab for additional actions. For example, you can drop or skip uh, the traffic if the firewall is down based on your requirement. Okay, when ready, you create your policy. The just created service node appears. Uh, extend it to see the service policy and the root peering associated to this uh, service node. Select uh, the root peering, which is optional, right? Um, if you call uh, the policy, you don't need to do that. As soon as uh, you attach your root peering, DCNM generates a configuration that you can preview for different components, uh, leaf nodes and, and networks. Then you deploy. It will take a few seconds to push the configurations for the root peering that uh, you can verify uh, the status in the history. check the status uh, which is now pending and uh, when it is in sync uh, you can look now at the service policy tab so the repairing is now ready on the policy tab attach the policy you can preview the configuration for each node and tenants And uh, when ready, you can deploy. After a short period of time, the service policy status shows in sync. This means that the service policy is now active and all the traffic from the web tiers to the application tiers is now redirected to the firewall. Let's have a look on the um, uh, user data. So the web server T14 was pinging an application server 101.5, but suddenly it stopped. The reason is that to make it visual and to show the redirections, uh, the firewall denies uh, any traffic. So let's go to the firewall CLI and permit the uh, IP traffic. As you can see, the traffic from the web tiers now uh, to the application tiers and vice versa is now redirected to the firewall. 
Now the service policy is active, you may want to monitor its usage. When the service policy is up and running, you can monitor the data packets uh, that hit the firewall. You need to select the service policy you wish to monitor and select the statistics. Then you select the leaf node that displays the cumulative uh, redirected flow that hit the policy associated to the switch. The statistics are displayed for the selected switches and this for a specific time range. Also, from the topology, you can do a global search of uh, redirected flows for a particular service policy. The redirected flow sections is added to the switch information window, which has the uh, service configured. The end user double click on the icon of the uh, leaf node highlighted in the topology view. The service nodes and connectivity are displayed within the fabric. The demo consists of showing the cumulative statistic from uh, the service policy as well as uh, from the topology view, leverage the search engine to retrieve the active redirected flows for a particular policy. From the service control windows, select the fabric you wish uh, to monitor the statistics. Uh, select uh, the service policy and click on the statistic button. Select uh, the node you wish to monitor. You can see the flows that match the policy. You can specify a different time range. You can look for redirected flows and retrieve the device associated with a particular service policy. And for this, you need to select the topology view, change the scope for a fabric where you created the service policies. And then you can see how the firewall is attached to the fabric, uh, the leaf nodes and the interface. Now you can do a search for a redirected flows. Select the service policy of choice and you will be able to identify two colors. The blue identifies uh, the leaf nodes where the uh, service node is attached. And by selecting the nodes of interest, you can view uh, the details of the networks and the VLANs concerns by the redirected flow. And the dark color indicates where the flows have been redirected by the policy for the VLANs, either for the service nodes or for the applications. This section on service node insertion concludes the module two. We started this module with uh, the creation of a greenfield fabric, meaning that uh, we built from ground up a VXN VPN fabric in few click. Then we created a multi-site domain between two VXN VPN fabrics. We saw how DC and Moto provision the interfabric connectivity between uh, the sites that we move into the MSD and deploy the uh, border gateways uh, in few click. And uh, we saw how to import the classic LAN and how to configure the virtual port channels. No less crucial, uh, a fabric without a network transport is somehow useless. So you saw how to create and automate the deployment of network overlays and VRF across multiple sites in a few clicks and how we can leverage interface group to accelerate the network deployments in uh, just one click. And we just saw the automatic insertion of uh, service node with the service policies. Thank you for watching this uh, module two and let's go to the next one.